Using a 360 camera, people go outside and capture what's called an HDRI, which can be summed up as a 360 degree image, in some sense stitched together until we get this equi-rectangular map. The reason we take these is we want to use them for lighting. We kind of like slap it onto our 3D world as our sphere, render stuff out, and we're good to go. However, there is one key thing that is wrong about that. Remember, we're going out to capture this, which means we're slapping this camera down with the tripod on the ground. There is no sphere, it's more so of a dome. All this requires Requires is a coordinate switch, which works like this. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, and we're going to talk about that later. We have a witness camera that I'm going to say is kind of pointing downwards at position C, and it's facing the direction. We'll call this the vector V. At the moment, we're treating this as if we're inside a sphere, and we're saying, okay, camera, kind of keep going down until you intersect the sphere, and then show me that bit of texture. We're actually living inside of a dome. So instead of kind of like intersecting over here, we want the coordinate where this ray intersects the ground. This is called ray plane projection, I think. We need to get this position P, I'm gonna call it. What do we know? We know that the position P that we want is gonna be the camera plus some amount, I'm gonna call it X, along the vector V. Start at the camera and then I go along for some distance X along the vector V until we hit the ground. Really the question is what is this X? Well this equation is three-dimensional for X, Y, and Z. Well what is the position of Z? We know that P is supposed to be on the ground, so it has a height of zero. Zero has to be equal to the z component of c plus whatever our mystery x is times the z component of our vector. And we get that this mystery x value, the distance that we're going along the ray, is equal to negative the z camera divided by z of the vector. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna plug it in, and that should be our new coordinate. Kind of. We have a 360 degree HDRI, which isn't like mapped to the floor the way we want it to. And by default, this HDRI is using a environment texture that secretly is using generated coordinates. You could think of this as basically a spherical mapping where a point off in the distance like this one just represents the direction that we're facing. So if I'm going to face all the way down the x-axis, we expect it to be quite red. If we face all the way down the y-axis, we expect it to be quite green. And up on the z-axis, it's quite blue. So again, this is the equation where we now know what this x term is, and we can plug away. So how do I know the position of the view or the camera? Here's a little trick. If I use a vector transform node, we're able to take a point, a vector, a normal. In this case, I want a point because it's a point in space and map it from like world, object, and camera to different things. And the trick is if I go from camera to world where the input vector is going to be zero, this is exactly the position of the camera. Why is this the case? Zero, zero, zero relative to the camera is exactly where the camera is. If my camera is like over here, for example, this point right here is going to be our camera position, which is somewhere. But relative to the camera, you can think of it as like the origin of camera space. We're going to need the Z component of this camera, and then we're also going to need to know the direction this is facing. If you use the geometry node, there's something called a incoming vector, which actually is the opposite. It shows for a shading point which direction goes towards the camera. So we just kind of like reverse that with a negative one. Down the Y axis, it's Y. Down the X axis, it's X. And then Z. This might sound familiar because it is exactly the same as using generated coordinates in this world shader uh, case. What is our final equation? Well, we take the camera and then we subtract away C z divided by the z component of the view vector and then we scale the view vector by this like magic quantity that we figured out and we subtract one from another if i now look at this kind of like world shader regardless of what this shows you can see that there is something on the ground but if i use this new coordinate system for my hdri so again it's using generated and now it's using this coordinate you can see it does this stretching thing it definitely kind of looks like a dome but it's super weird the issue here is our environment texture node whatever coordinates we feed into it is going to do a mapping where it kind of assumes we're giving it a sphere and then it goes away with that. The issue is we have a dome where if you were to take the floor and like map it onto a sphere by normalizing its positions, you're just kind of going outwards. The floor just kind of goes to this ring, which is exactly why we get this changing like radially as we go around. What we need to do is we need to take this bottom part and then bring it downwards. So this is kind of the height. Whenever that's going to be below the floor, it's going to map back onto the sphere because the floor is infinitely wide. All I need to do is I need to subtract some component such that the z is not zero. So I'm just going to make it negative. And then all of a sudden, we have a projection. It's looking pretty weird. From my experience, this number needs to be eh, kind of big, like five. And now our floor is perfect. If I was to add a cube onto here, you're going to see it's a bit jank. It's almost like it's halfway through the floor. And that is because if I'm to look at the solid view, it's halfway through the floor. So I'm going to bring it one unit up. And now you can see it's sitting on the floor. Now, this doesn't account for the other hemisphere, which is now weird. It's distorted. What's going on? 
one is our custom coordinate system is perfect for the ground, but we didn't really account for what happens above. And if you think about it, the top hemisphere can use like the spherical mapping, like that part isn't wrong. So if I was to combine the best of both worlds, then we'd be good to go. I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to mix a vector where we can go from one to the other. And then the question is, what is our factor going to be? Well, it needs to be positive wherever we're above the ground and negative whenever it's the ground or lower. That can be exactly determined by taking our spherical generated coordinates. I'm going to take the Z component that you can see gets more positive as we go up all the way up to one and then all the way down to negative one over here. I check where is this greater than, let's say, zero. This is kind of like a world going up and down kind of thing. I turn this into the mix factor, which will now give us a new coordinate system. And now you can see this looks correct where we have a nice dome projection. So everything above the, we'll call it the horizon, is a dome that, you know, goes off into the distance. We're used to this. Whereas the ground is, you know, there's actually a ground there. This video, wait a second, dome projection, dome projection. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the best place to make a website. Mine, cgmatter.com, made, hosted with Squarespace. There I host a bunch of free nodes you can get out that membership site with monthly recurring payments. Squarespace payments lets me, you know, do this very easily and run a business. Another thing that's useful about Squarespace is they have an asset library. That means all your GIFs, GIFs, images, files, you can store it right inside the Squarespace workflow. And then thirdly, if you find yourself doing a lot of filler content like documentation, there's direct AI integration in Squarespace that will help speed up that workflow. If this sounds good to you, head over to Squarespace, make a website, and when you're ready to take that website and launch, use this link below in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. There are like certain benefits to doing this. First of all, it's just kind of more accurate, like the light is coming from the correct direction, but this is also going to help with reflections. So if I give this a like low roughness, high metallic, shiny material, you can see now it's actually reflecting the ground. So before, after, before, after, and then if I wanted to give this a shadow as if it actually was on the ground, what you would do is you would then add in a plane and you can see this catches the uh, shadow. And that in fact is the only thing I want to keep. So in the visibility, make it a shadow catcher. You see that it's in the reflection here. We can get rid of the glossy, maybe rid of the diffuse and everything else. And now it really looks like we're sitting in space, right? And this projection, you can see it's invariant. It doesn't care about which HDRI we're using. I can swap this out with a different thing. And you can see it instantly looks realistic. We have control over this like scaling, which you can think about as the scale of the ground kind of. So if I make this tiny, you can see it's pinching to a point, turn that into 10. The thing with an indoor one is objects aren't that far away. So there's going to be all this like distortion, which is expected, but at least we're getting the ground where it's supposed to be. Here's a nice outdoor one. Here's another interior one. This one's super cool. Now I kind of took this idea and made it much more powerful by making what I call the HDRI dome projection add-on. So if I do this outdoor one, you can see it quickly switches and that can be, you know, whatever you want it to be. Let's do this one over here. But there's also control of the span, which we talked about. Rotation, which we did not talk about. You need to do a transformation on those coordinates. And then the height, which is another transformation. So if I set this to minus two, you can see all of a sudden it looks like the sphere is floating again. That is because we need to treat it such that the ground plane isn't at zero, but move downwards by negative two units. The moment I do that, once again, it's going to look like it's mapped to the floor. That's kind of the idea. There you go.